We now come to our fourth and final part of issues management, evaluation. And so we'll first place evaluation in the context of the rest of issues management and discuss what should happen in this stage as well. It shouldn't be surprising that there is an evaluation stage. Issues management begins and ends with data or intelligence. At the heart of it, like all strategic communication efforts, issues management should be a learning process where we better understand what went well so that we can replicate it in the future, what needs to be addressed now, and what should be addressed differently in the future. Think of the evaluation stage as the bridge to an ongoing issues management process that wraps up the particular actions taken so the organization can assess and add the outcomes to their scanning, monitoring, and decision-making in the future. Consideration of the evaluation stage shouldn't necessarily come last in the sequence. Thinking about how relative levels of success can be measured, evaluated, and lessons learned developed are an inherent part of each of the stages. It's just that it's formalized and executed in the last stage. So what's entailed? The first part of evaluation is clearly laying out the thresholds for relative levels of success. This, of course, should be aligned with the goals set up in the decision-making process and tied to the risks identified earlier. In short, just like everything we do, we begin by establishing what matters and how we know whether we were successful. So while the details in evaluating the success of issues management initiatives will vary as much as the issues themselves, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, the most crucial step in evaluation is setting clear and measurable objectives. Mark Twain's maxim, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there, is as applicable to issues management as it is to any other communications endeavor. So measurable objectives for actions to mitigate the risk, identification of the success threshold, must be considered in at this stage. Second, we figure out how the particulars of how we're going to be going about evaluating the measurable objectives. So we have to identify an evaluation scheme. Practitioners today have access to more measurement tools than ever before. The challenge is finding the right tool to fit this set of objectives. For example, measuring the extent and tone of media coverage is meaningful only if one of the pursued objectives is to secure specific media attention in terms of volume, channels, tone, and so on. Other objectives, such as influencing the drafting of legislation, positioning the organization effectively in relation to the industry-wide problem, or correcting allegations about a product or service all require different metrics. So at this part, for each measurable objective, we have to identify how it can be measured and the types of information required, and most importantly, how you're going to access that information. Finally, capturing lessons from failures and successes. In truth, this is probably the most important part in an ongoing issues management program because it informs the other three stages. From what went well, what aspects of the process should be replicated in the future, for what went poorly, what were the problems and how, they can, how can they be mitigated in the future. Naturally, lessons learned aren't just about issues management. There will be real tangible management, leadership, and material lessons learned from each issue managed, no matter whether it was poorly managed or effectively managed. Having a genuine focus on organizational learning is one of the ways that organizations can profit in, in terms of both financial profit, but usually in terms of reputational profit after problems emerge. When organizations clearly demonstrate they've listened, made changes, and improved, that carries a meaningful weight with people. When we go back to the hygiene motivation theory that we've talked about in brief in these lessons, organizational learning shows critical stakeholders that organizations are motivated by doing better, not just talking about it and trying to make themselves look good in the end. Issues management can't necessarily be about just putting lipstick on a pig. It has to be more authentic than that.